Another case for Nick Carter, Master Detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. Today's curious adventure... The Numbers Murders, or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Wrong Note. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter solved the mystery of the Numbers Murders. But first, a word about Linex. Just as American homemakers have found that Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, is the modern way to new wall beauty, so will you find the three great Linex home brighteners the modern way to keep your floors, woodwork, and furniture sparkling and new in appearance. For instance, Linex Clear Gloss. This transparent liquid dries to a hard, durable, lustrous finish that resists damage to your floors or linoleum by hot grease, boiling water, fruit acids, even alcohol. That's why Linex Clear Gloss has been a household favorite for years. If you haven't it on hand, ask tomorrow for Linex, L-I-N-X, Linex Clear gloss. Yes, you'll find all three great Linux home brighteners at paint, hardware, and department stores everywhere. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. Our story opens in a dingy little saloon on a back street. So, you, you finally hit it, eh, Benny? Yeah, three years I've been playing them numbers and doing nothing but lose. But today, oh boy, $50,000. Which numbers was you playing, Benny? Duke Dawson's or Lucky Combs? Oh, the Dukes. He's a square shooter. Always pays off on the nose when you win. He's a great guy, the Duke. You think it's safe to go around telling everybody you won all that dough? Yeah, something might happen to you before you get to spend it. Oh, I ain't no fool, Butch. I ain't told only a couple of my pals and... The Duke would want me to tell him. He likes to have the guys know he pays when he loses. Fifty grand. Oh, and all mine. <laughs> Gee, I can't believe it yet. Yeah, but as long as you got it in your pocket, it's easy to believe it. Yeah, you're right there. Well, so long, fella. I gotta be getting on home. <laughs> I ain't gotta tell the old lady we're rich now. <laughs> Won't she be tickled? <laughs> so long, Benny. Hey, don't spend it all on the way home. Spend it all? Hey, you can't spend that much dough without you do some thinking about it. Fifty grand. Ah, oh, that Duke's a swell guy. Ever lets a fellow down. Well, when you got the winning ticket, you know you got the dough. Hello, Benny. Uh-huh. Oh, it's you. Glad to see you. How's the boy? I about your luck, Benny. want to congratulate you. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> the best luck I've had in years. Got it with you, I suppose. Uh, sure, I got it with me. You don't think I... Hey, put down that gun. You can't... Fifty grand. Thanks, pal. Which, together with the evidence already set forth above, proves conclusively that the man known as... Oh, Nick, not so fast. I can't keep up with you. What's the matter, Patsy? Got cramps in your fingers? Oh, no, Nick, it's not that. We've been working on this report for over three hours without stopping. I can't keep it up all day. <laughs> all right, Patsy, let's rest for a few minutes. I wouldn't be so anxious to finish this report, except... To... Nicholas Carter's office. Hello, Patsy. Is Nick there? Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Just a minute. See you more. Thanks. Hello, Riley. What's on the royal mind this evening? Ah, uh, now, Nick, lay off the kid in a minute. Just because you're called a mastermind and all the yellow journals in the city don't mean the time... All right. Of... All right, Riley, I withdraw my remark. What's wrong with the world now? Just a murder, Nick. Just a murder. Nothing new about a murder, Riley. Why drag me in? Now, Nick, I'm asking you as a personal favor. Will you give me a hand on this? If we don't get this one solved and solved quick, the commissioner's going to be down on us like a ton of bricks. Well, what's so special about this particular murder? Uh, meet me in front of 756 Brownlee Avenue as soon as you can, and I'll tell you all about it. Uh, what do you say? But, Riley, it's after 11 now. Can't I wait until tomorrow? Oh, no, Nick, it can't. we got to get to it right now. Will you meet me? All right. Meet you then five or ten minutes. Ah, uh, thanks, Nick. I'll be seeing you. So long. So long. Are we going out, Nick? 
Yes, Patsy. We're going to have a look at somebody who's just suddenly and violently passed out of this world. Get your hat and let's go. Oh, there you are, Nick. Well, how are you, Patsy? Okay, thanks, Lieutenant. Where's the remains, Riley? Uh, right over here, Nick. Just the way my man found him. I see. Two shots right through the heart. Uh-huh. Never knew what hit him. Looks as if they might have come from a forty-five. Uh, right, Nick. All right, Riley, who is he and why should I care? Well, his name's Benny Smith. He's one of the characters that hang around the edge of the underworld. No record, but a great guy for playing the numbers. Been playing them since they were started. And I think that's what killed him. Oh, now, Lieutenant, how could the numbers kill him? Well, Benny connected today, Patsy. He won himself $50,000. Mm. And he had it on him when he started home, they tell me, but he ain't got a cent of it now. He's as clean as a whistle. Very interesting. Probably talked too much about his luck. Well, where do I come in? Uh, Benny played Duke Dawson's numbers, Nick. And Duke's had two heavy winners this month. Now, both of them were killed in the same way. Before they got home, and both of them lost their roles. Now, once could be a play and hold up. But twice, it's like a regular thing, and I want to find out. The killings like this have got to stop. That's where you come in, Nick. I need some of your fancy ideas on how to stop them. Lucky Coombs runs the other numbers game, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Him and the Duke have been at each other's throats for the last six months. Well, maybe Lucky thinks this is a good way to persuade the public that if you win with the Duke, you don't live to spend what you win. It could be, Nick. And it could be, too, that the Duke needs the coin bad enough to want to get it back. I'd hate to play any numbers game where I had to lose my life when I won any money. There's no percentage in the numbers game from any point of view, Patsy. It's a sucker's game. Well, Riley, where do you want me to start? Ah, good for you, Nick. I, I knew you couldn't stay out of it. Look, what do you say we go to call on the Duke and see what he's got to say for himself? Okay, Riley. You drive on ahead. We'll follow you. But don't let the cops catch you speeding. I never was in a place like this before, Nick. And you probably won't ever want to be again, Patsy. Is the piano the only music there is? Yes. But Steve Corey's a good piano player, none better. And he not only is a good piano player, he also serves as a lookout for the Duke. Hmm? See how the piano is right at the foot of the stairs to the second floor? Mm-hmm. Well, that's where the Duke's offices are. And no one can get up there without Steve seeing them. Oh. He signals ahead with his piano to let the Duke know whether it's a friend or an enemy who's coming up. Hey, how do you know so much about this place, Nick? Oh, I get around Riley now and then. And I suppose if Steve signals that it's the wrong kind of company coming to call, they get the wrong kind of reception. That's about it, Patsy. Hi, Steve. The Duke in? Yeah. Go on up. Hey, what do you smoke on that pipe of yours? Old cabbage leaves? Shoe leather. Tastes better. It smells like the deuce, whatever it is. Come on, come on, Nick. We gotta be moving. Right. Which is his office here, Nick? This one here. That's funny. Try the door. Maybe he's not in there. He must be. Steve told us to come up. And I can see there's a light inside. Hey, maybe there's something wrong there. Let's here, have a Duke look. Dawson. I think we better come on. Come on with me now. Again. Come on again. That's it. Again. Break it in, Riley. Break it in. That's it. There it is. Are you hurt, Riley? No, did he get you? No. What's going on in here? Nothing now, Patsy. You can come in. Hey, look there, Nick. Dead. Shot right through the forehead. Is that the Duke? Yes, Patsy, that was the Duke. Hey, look, that's where the killer went, Nick. Through that window there. Yeah. And down the fire escape. Below, there's a dozen ways he could have gone. We'd never see him. Uh, if we'd only gotten in a little sooner, Nick. That wouldn't have made any difference, Riley. I suppose not. He was out to get the Duke, and he'd have gotten him anyway. It was just as easy for the killer to get out on the fire escape and wait for us. Oh, it's a good thing it was a poor shot or you'd both be dead. I don't think so, Patsy. Well, what do you mean? Well, look how high his bullets went. Up above the door there. Oh, you think he was just trying to scare us, Nick? Looks that way. He could certainly shoot straighter than that. Now we've got two murders to solve instead of one. Yes. I'm beginning to get interested in this now. Let's see what the Duke can tell us about this. Hmm. The Duke had no weapon, so he apparently wasn't expecting an attack. Must have known the man who killed him. Hey, Nick. I thought the Duke didn't smoke. He didn't. Uh, there's an awful lot of burned matches here in this ashtray for a guy who don't smoke. And they're all burned pretty well down, too. Uh -huh. And here's a cigarette butt. 
It's a Uador. Uh, a Uador? I never heard of that brand, Nick. Very few people smoke them. Oh. And Lucky Coombs is one of them. Lucky Coombs? Then that maybe means... Maybe it that does I... and maybe it doesn't. Let's not jump too fast. I'll just take this butt and these matches along with me. They may come in handy before we're through. Well, i better call headquarters and get some of the boys up here. Right. And while you take care of this end of it, Patsy and I'll go and call on Lucky. Maybe he can tell us something about this. Okay, Nick. Yeah, but be careful, lad. Lucky's a tough baby. I will. I know how to handle him. Oh, Steve. Yeah? Did the Duke have many callers tonight? No. No? How about Lucky Coombs? He wasn't over here, was he? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, what of it? Nothing. Maybe. By the way, you better get this crowd out of here. The Duke's been murdered. This place is going to be filled with cops, reporters, photographers, fingerprint men, and detectives in about ten minutes. Uh, Duke? Murdered? Yeah. So long, Steve. Come on, Patsy. Let's see what Lucky has to say. Eleven, please. Well, this ought to put an end to the numbers racket in this town, Nick. For a while, anyway. With the Duke dead and Lucky and Jim for his murder. Maybe. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, oh. Patsy, stay in the car. Those two mugs outside may mean trouble. Be careful, Nick. Uh, going someplace, Flatfoot? Why, yes. Just a friendly visit. I want to see Lucky a minute. Lucky's not receiving tonight. Not cops, anyways. I'm no cop. Just want a friendly talk with him. Well, you can't. No? I think I can. Yeah? Well, me and my buddy here is going to see that you don't. We sure are. You got a search warrant, have you? Oh, you want to see my search warrant, do you? Well, here it is. Oh, Nick, watch if the other one's got a gun. Yeah, and I'm going to drill you so full of holes that you want to... Well, Nick seems to be having difficulty getting in to see Lucky. Does this mean Lucky is the man who killed the Duke? And what's Nick going to do about it? We'll see in just a moment. Ladies... Here's a bit of news about homemaking that means a better-looking home and more time for you to enjoy it. To give your floors a lustrous finish without bothersome rubbing, use Linex Self-Polishing Wax, the time-saving, work-saving liquid finish for all floor surfaces, wood, tile, or linoleum, the finish which is glossy yet not slippery. Linex Self-Polishing Wax remains resistant to slip even when water is spilled on it and provides additional slip resistance with each additional coat of wax. These facts have been proved by the underwriters' laboratories whose seal appears on every bottle. Linex self-polishing wax gives a tough, elastic finish because it really contains wax, the highest possible content of genuine carnauba wax. And when the most used parts of your floor show wear, they may be re-waxed without going over the whole floor. So remember always, ask for the liquid wax which is easy to apply, which dries easily to a lustrous finish that resists dirt, wear, and water, and is not slippery to walk on. It's Linex, L-I-N-X, Linex Self-Polishing Wax. You'll find it at your nearest paint, hardware, or department store, your headquarters for all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone. And now, back to our story. We left Nick fighting it out with one of Lucky Coombs' gunmen as he tried to get in to see Lucky to question him about the killing of Duke Dawson. I'm going to drill you so full of holes, you... Oh! Shot my hand off. You're all right. I just knocked your gun out of your hand. That's all. Here, I'll take it. And just to be sure, I'll take your pal gun, too. Now, you'll both be good little boys. I won't tell Lucky on you. Won't tell Lucky what? Oh, hello, Lucky. I've enjoyed meeting your welcoming committee. Well, sometimes their ambition gets the better of their common sense. They told me it was you coming up, Carter. I would have advised them to let you in and save themselves a headache. Here are your boys' pop guns. Give them back to them after I go. Thanks. You can come out now, Patsy. Well, that's your daily dozen for this evening. I always enjoy watching you exercise. It does me so much good. What can I do for you, Carter? I suppose you know Benny Smith was killed tonight. Right after he collected the 50,000, he won in Duke Dawson's numbers game. Yeah, yeah, I uh, heard about that. 
You don't think I had anything to do with that, do you? And did you also hear that Duke Dawson himself was murdered a little while later? So. Oh, you think you can pin that on me? We found one of your cigarettes half-smoked in the ashtray on the Duke's desk, Lucky. What? And the Duke didn't smoke. Not three people in the city smoke your brand. How did your cigarette get in the Duke's ashtray? My cigarette, huh? You could easily be held for the murder on the evidence we have, Lucky. But I suppose you have an alibi. If so, let's have it. Well, uh... I, uh, haven't been out of my apartment all evening. No alibi, huh? Well, well, that's very interesting. No alibi and a shame to admit it. Then he must be the one who... Easy, Betsy. If you think I did it, why don't you run me in? No, Lucky, we're not going to run you in. But you will stick around, won't you? Just in case we need you for a witness or something. Oh, Nick, surely you're not going to let him go. Why not? You will stick around, Lucky? Yeah. Fine. Yeah, I'll stick around. Uh, let me know when you need me for something. Thanks, I will. Well, good night, Lucky. Come on, Patsy, let's be going. Why so quiet, Patsy? You haven't said a word since we left Lucky's. Well, I can't understand it, Nick. You have what looks like good reason to believe Lucky killed the Duke, and you let him go. Doesn't make sense to me. Why, Patsy, that's all part of my plan. I think I have the answer to both killings now. And leaving Lucky loose is part of my way of proving it. Mm, And I suppose that phone call you made after we left Lucky's was part of your plan, too. Right, Patsy. All part of my plan. And did your phone call accomplish what you hoped it would? Ah, indeed it did, Patsy. Indeed it did. May I ask what it was? You may. Oh, Nick, why don't you tell me what's going on? I don't get it at all. I phoned a certain party to get a certain address. And I got it, that's all. Do you know who the killer is? I think so. Well, who? That, unfortunately, I'm not prepared to divulge at this precise moment. Oh, Nick. Well, here we are. Hmm, Here we are where? At the address I got on the phone. It's the third house up there. The rooming house. And what do we do there? Now, Patsy, listen carefully. When I tell you. I'm going inside that house. Alone? Yes, alone. And as soon as I do, I want you to go to the phone in the drugstore across the street and phone Riley. He'll be back at headquarters by this time. Tell him to come up here just as fast as he can. I may need him. Tell him to bring some of his men in the hurry-up wagon, but not to use the siren. When he gets here, tell him to wait out here with you until I come out. Or if I don't come out... Tell him to rush in after me just as soon as he hears gunshots. Oh, Nick, hadn't you better wait until he gets here before you go in there? Can't do it, Betsy. I've got to get inside before the next visitor does. That's the important part of my plan. Now, you have it straight? I think so. Good. I'm counting on you, Patsy. Don't fail me. Well, wish me luck. I may need it. Nick Carter, got a few questions I'd like to ask you. Questions? Yes. I'm alone. Well, I see you're packing your suitcase, Steve. You weren't getting ready to leave town, were you? What if I was? Ah, uh, you shouldn't do that. We might need your testimony in clearing up Duke Dawson's murder. Huh? You're the only witness we have to testify that Lucky Coombs called on the Duke just before he was murdered. Yeah, that's just why I'm getting out. I'm not staying here to be taken for a ride by Lucky's guerrillas. And that's what had happened to me, if I said anything against him. You won't be taken for a ride by Lucky's gunman, I'll guarantee that. I ain't taking no chances. Yeah, got a match? Sure. Thanks. (laughs) Still smoking old cabbage leaves in that pipe of yours, I see. Why don't you try tobacco for a change? Ah, shut up. I ain't taking no more riding from you. No, from nobody. Okay, Steve. Oh, do you mind if I keep this match you just used? What? What do you want it for? I think I can use it. Hey, what's going on here, Carter? What can you use a burned match for? For one thing, I can use it to send you to jail. To, to jail, huh? 
Yes, for murder. You won't send me to jail for murder. Drop I'm... that gun, Steve. Yeah, here. That's enough from you. Give me that gun. Yes, I will. I... Give me that gun. Let go. Oh. Uh... There. Uh, I, uh, Doug, you didn't have to break my arm, did you? Lucky for me, you shot in a hurry. Otherwise, you might have got me somewhere else and just in the fleshy part of my arm. Now, let's see what's in that suitcase. Hey, you keep on Say where you are, Steve. I've got the gun now. Sit down on that chair. I'll be quiet. Aha. Uh-huh. Quite a nice roll of bills you have here. At least $50,000, I should say, by the size of the roll. Yeah? Well, what's it to you? It was a nice racket you were working, Steve. Whenever the Duke paid off any big money, you knew who got the money, laid for them, and killed them. The Duke knew it was bad business to have his winners killed that way. So somehow he must have gotten wise to you. Probably by having someone trail Benny, someone who saw you kill him. So he called you in to have a talk with you. And you killed him. That ain't true. I didn't. I didn't. Lucky Coombs did it. That's so? Well, we'll see what Lucky has to say when you tell him that. Huh? Well, Lucky... He'll be here in a few minutes, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, no. I couldn't. He'd kill me. He'd, he'd kill me. Stay where you are, Steve. Stay where you are. I'll stand behind the door. You dirty double-crossing rat. You... That's enough, Lucky. Hold it. Drop that gun! Ah! Ah! Is he... Is he... Did you kill him? No. I just shot him through the shoulder. The shock knocked him out. He'll live to go to the electric chair with you. Hey, Nick! Nick, are you hurt? Oh, Nick, are you all right? It's all right, it's all right. Everything's under control. Oh, thank goodness. All right, Riley, there are your two murderers. Steve in the chair and Lucky on the floor. Two of them? Glory be! Yes, Riley, two of them. You better get your handcuffs on them before they decide to run out on you. I'll do just that. Now, my fine friend Steve, hold out your hand. And you, Lucky... You can't help me, so I'll just put them on you while you're asleep. And you would be all right when you wake up. Well, then it was Lucky, Nick. Yes, Patsy. Lucky and Steve together. Oh, mm. this is a great day for the police department. Two men killed and the two murderers caught. Lieutenant, are you giving all the credit to the police department? It seems to oh, me... Oh, no, that... no, 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 of course not. I, I just meant that... It's all right, Riley, it's all right. My part of it's done. Your precious police department can have all the glory if they want it. Well, tell me about it, Nick. How did they do it? And who killed who? And hold why it, did they hold kill... it, hold it. I'll meet you down at your office in half an hour and give you all the details and the evidence you need. Right now, I want to get my arm fixed up. Oh, Nick, you're hurt. Is it bad? Let me get a doctor, quick. No, it's not serious, Patsy. It's just a flesh wound. Oh. And it's rather painful. I'd like to get it taken care of. Come on, Patsy. I guess you better have to drive. I'll see you later, Riley. That feels better. A good doctor's a wonderful thing when you need him. And Dr. Sturgis is as good a man as there is. And now, Mr. Carter, I want to hear all about it. Oh, Patsy. Can't you wait until we get to Riley's office? I don't want to go through the story twice. Nick Carter, if you don't give me all the details right here and now, I'll stop this car and we won't move an inch until you decide to tell me what I want to know. All right, all right. You're a hard woman, Miss Bowen. I guess I'll have to give in. Well, what do you want to know first? First? Where does Steve come into this? He did the killing. Then what about Lucky? Lucky was the man behind the throne, so to speak. Lucky wanted to cut in on the Duke's customers, so he had the Duke's winners killed. Steve, however, did the actual killing and got most of the money for his reward. But when the Duke caught on to Steve, Steve killed him and double-crossed Lucky. How do you mean double-crossed him? Steve planted one of Lucky's cigarettes in the Duke's ashtray. He undoubtedly had some of them from being associated with Lucky. So he just smoked one halfway down and left it where we'd be sure to find it. Then who shot at you and Lieutenant Riley when you broke into the Duke's room earlier this evening? That was Steve. But Nick, Steve was downstairs playing the piano. He was there when we left him, yes. And he was there when we went back. But in between, he slipped out the back, up the fire escape, fired over our heads as we entered to make us think the killer was just leaving, and then went back to his piano. He thought he had a perfect alibi. How did you know that it was Steve? By the matches in the ashtray. How could they tell you anything? Patsy, how'd you light a cigarette? Here, here's a match. Try it. Okay. Why, well, I suppose you'd light the match like this. Light your cigarette. And put out the match like this. Exactly. Now look at that match you just used. Mm-hmm. It's only slightly burned at the end. Now look at this match, which I took from the ashtray. Now well, that's burned almost all the way down. Exactly. It was used to light a pipe, not a cigarette. And Steve's a pipe smoker. He probably smoked as he talked to the Duke before he killed him, before we got there. 
You see, Patsy, I knew the Duke was dead when we got there this evening. Well, if you knew Steve did the killings, how did you find out about Lucky? Well, I felt sure Steve wouldn't dare to do it without strong backing. But there was no evidence against Lucky. So that's why I went to him and told him about one of his cigarettes being left in the Duke's ashtray. And that's also why I didn't want to take him in. Oh, now I see. I felt sure he'd go to see Steve and give himself away. And he did. Hey, Nick, I just realized what you said a minute ago. You said you knew that the Duke was dead before you went upstairs to his office tonight. Now, how could you possibly know that? Very simple, Patsy. Steve was the Duke's lookout man. He used the piano as a signal. The top key on the piano was wired to a buzzer that sounded in the Duke's room. That meant someone was coming up. But when we went up tonight, he didn't hit that note. I watched him carefully. And he didn't hit it because he knew there was no one alive to hear it. He hit the wrong note. I'll say he hit the wrong note in more ways than one. How do you mean, Patsy? Well, considering that tonight you've solved three murders, ended the numbers racket, and recovered the stolen money. I'd say that Steve hit the wrong note when he tried to fool you. In just a moment, Nick and Patsy will bring you a preview of next week's exciting case. But first, here's a thought for all of you homemakers. Of course, you take pride in your home. Of course, you want your folks to take pride in it, too. And your husband, your family, will sit up and take notice of the bright new beauty Linex Cream Polish gives your treasured furniture. For Linex Cream Polish is the modern way to protect the things in your home. It quickly restores your furniture's attractiveness in one quick, easy application. And Linex Cream Polish dries to a hard finish that leaves no oily film to attract additional dust to make additional work. It does away with fingerprints, helps to hide ugly scratches, and after a few applications, provides a tabletop finish that will actually resist glass marks. Best of all, Linex Cream Polish saves you one whole step in your cleaning day routine. For Linex Cream Polish cleans as it polishes without tiresome rubbing. So depend upon this modern, easy shortcut to furniture beauty. Linex Cream Polish. Get it today and enjoy the extra time you save. In case your dealer hasn't received his supply of the three great Linex home brighteners, he'll probably have them soon. Ask him to save one or all of them for you. Acme will see that he gets them, and you get them, as quickly as possible. And now, Nick, how about next week's adventure? Well, Ken, the main ingredients of next week's story are a small boy and a slingshot. Well, I didn't know you went in for cases of juvenile delinquency. He doesn't, unless you call it juvenile delinquency when an organized gang of thugs holds up an armored car, kills the guards, and gets away with thousands of dollars of the bank's money. Well, hey, that's uh, really big-time stuff, but where did the small boy and the slingshot come into it? They were the means of my being able to catch the killers, get back the money, and break up the gang. And it gave Nick one of the most unpleasant and dangerous two hours he ever spent. Well, I'll certainly look forward to hearing that. Uh, any further hints, Nick? No, that's all for now, Ken. I'll tell you the rest next time. I call the story The Slingshot Murders. Or The Mystery of the Broken Window. So long. So long, everybody. And so long to you, Nick and Patsy. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again next Sunday afternoon. <laughs> next week at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Cotter, Master Detective, entitled The Slingshot Murders. For Nick Carter and the mystery of the broken window. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is a copyright feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. It is presented at this same time and over these same stations by the three great Linex home brighteners. Linex Clear Gloss, Linex Cream Polish, and Linex Self-Polishing Wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. In the Nick Carter Adventures, Lon Clark is starred as Nick. Helen Choate is featured as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White. The programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linux dealers and Acme quality retail stores all over America and saying so long until next week. This is Mutual.